We're back on the Morning Brew with friends talking with Jonathan Miknovich, and you are the director of operations at the Bosky Brewing Company. Yes, sir. Which is one of the city's growing breweries. This is amazing. You guys have gone from basically that little tap room over on San Mateo by the Bloom Fiesta Park to now having three locations. Right. Right. And I guess was the Great American Beer Fest last week? It was on, yeah, last week. You guys won a big award. This is cool. I love this when locals win huge awards like this, especially when it's for one of my favorite beers. Right. Right. Getting there. Oh, look at that. What can we have a photo of? That's pretty awesome. Because so that is, if you tell us what that is, it's a gold, right? That's right. That's a gold medal at the Great American Beer Festival. This is for our Asequia Wet Hop IPA. It won in the won gold in the uh, fresh or wet hop category, which was a really fun category to win in because it's a pretty big, uh, it's a stacked category. All the heavy hitters for IPAs around the country, they get these coveted wet hops and they make What's these beers. wet hops? I have no idea. So it's a hop right off the vine. So they, oh, they, they, they so pick they're still it, green. They're still green. They pick it and then they brew with it within 24 hours. What does that do to the flavor? It gives it like this really nice grassy farm. Like mm. It smells like you're in a hop farm when you smell in the beer, mm -hmm. which is really cool because most of the hops that we use are, are dried and pelletized. Right. But then, um, you know, once a year, look right at, at harvest time. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. That's a bunch of whole leaf Azaka hops that we were using in one of our uh, IPAs over the, over the last uh, couple months that we did our monsoon IPA series. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And you know, is this an urban myth or not? So the IPA, I've always heard, it's called the India Pale Ale. Uh -huh. And I've always heard the story of... It was, it's called that because the British, when they colonized India, they still mm -hmm. wanted their beer, but when they would put it on a boat and take it to India, it would all go bad. Right. And is this, is it an urban myth that that's where this came from, that the hops are the preservative? No, no, or the hops are, are definitely a preservative, and they, they act as preserving or a preservative for the beer. Now, I think that there's a little bit of urban legend in that, in right. that story, but it is true that they used to hop the beers and, and you know, take them across to India, and they, they had that IPA. But the IPA actually originated in, in England, as far as I understand the story. Very cool. So how did you guys get started in brewing? I know that there was an interesting story about you guys and Axion and all of that. Right, yeah. Which so is we, cool. Yeah, we just had three partners that were all kind of had this entrepreneurial mindset but didn't know what we wanted to do and in the same weekend we all had the same idea let's open a microbrewery and um, we thought well we could probably ought to learn how to brew beer now oh you didn't even know how to brew beer? i didn't know how to brew beer at the beginning oh wow so we went on we I mean, just would sit around and drink beer and like beer and talk about yeah beer. we just had a passion for craft beer and so we got started and we knew that we had to get our foot in the door so we did that as home brewers and then we went out and hired the best guy we could find mm -hmm. um right away as soon as we possibly could the best because, brewer you could find yeah because we knew that we really needed someone with that professional uh, ability and not only that that special talent to create award-winning beers and that's that's john bullard for you and he's still with you oh yeah yeah he's actually one of our owners now oh very cool yeah very cool and you guys have three tap well the, the original tap room and then two others the one on right the one right. in knob hill the old hollywood video in knob hill right and then the one in las cruces mm -hmm. the one in knob hill I've, I've been to a few times it's packed it's oh, always yeah. really like every night it's packed yeah yeah and I can, in, it's a great dog patio too, by the way. Yeah, we I love do to have dogs on Yeah, it's great. Leashes, yeah, sure. yeah. But what does it do for your business when you can show up and you have that gold medal? Because last year you guys won the gold medal. We won the bronze the last bronze medal. medal. Yes. Okay. The gold medal, um, I think it's just a little bit of bragging rights right now. Um, yeah. What it really does is it helps us gain notoriety kind of around the country with other brewers, which mm -hmm. hopefully trickles out to the, the general public. You know, I don't right. think the public really cares necessarily about awards. Um, but they start to as as the buzz kind of starts to right. trickle through. Well, what was it four or five years ago? The Cumbre won their, the gold medal yeah. for their IPA. Oh yeah, and that kind of started putting everybody and putting locally on the yeah. map, right? Yep. And then Marble won Small Brewery of the Year last right. year. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So I mean, we we just the, the level of craft beer here in Albuquerque and in New Mexico in general is just top notch. We're living in this weird beer renaissance oh, right yeah. now. It's amazing. Um, and there's I think was it 24 breweries or something in town. I don't know what the latest number is, but I hear that there's another 30 in planning. I can believe it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's become a thing. This is my theory on it. Mm -hmm. We can we can talk about this. Sure. Because <laughs> you know, you go to other cities, uh -huh. and you know, people tell me first of all, like, oh, there's too many breweries. They're not going to make it. And right. Like, right. Well, wait a second. I go to you know, other cities, Chicago, D.C., San Francisco, wherever. Uh -huh. And in every corner, there's a little brewery, a little pub, a mm -hmm. little. You know, a, a little spot to get a, a cocktail, you know? And it, we don't have that in New Mexico because we're antiquated liquor laws. Right, right. And the breweries are now becoming the neighborhood pub, the neighborhood yeah. bar, I think, right? And you're seeing so many of them open up, and there's always going to be room for, you know, uh, the brew pub. 
You know, right. people, like, it's kind of like going back into England. You know, there's, oh, there's a pub on every corner. It's your neighborhood haunt. Right. That's the joint where everybody kind of gets together. And I think, there's pl I think there's plenty of room left for something like that. Right. Well, yeah. I think in, in your, your place in Knob Hill is certainly that. You know, right. Because there's you guys and just up the street is Tractor. Mm -hmm. And it's like, kind of like the same people who go between both of them and have fun and you can do something with it. And our clientele you know? in Las Cruces is like that to an even greater extent. I mean, yeah. everybody there is always there and they know everybody by name. We actually had a, a server that started... And they went up to her and were like, who are you? i got to get to know who the staff is because this is their, this is their crew right here. That's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. And the, your, your spot on San Mateo is still growing too, right? Yeah, it's growing. We're actually getting ready to uh, expand that location. We're going we're gonna to basically double the size of the tap room. Because um, it's, it's a pretty good size room already. It is. You know, uh, it, it, uh, you know it's not that big. The, the dining room is around, around 900 square feet. But um, we're getting to the point where we're so busy over there that we can't, we're turning people away. So yes. we're going to go ahead and blow out one of the walls and, and redo the interior, and we're going to have a lot more room. And, and take me back to 2012 when the three of you were sitting around and you were like having that brainstorming session when you decided uh -huh. like, we're going to open this brewery. Did you ever think it would be this? This was in the plans. Yeah? yeah I, I, this was oh, like oh, your yeah. original on the napkin business plan? Oh, yeah, yeah. Our, yeah. our, our goal was never to be a, a brew pub that just had one location. Mm. We always wanted to, well, maybe it wasn't about the locations, but it was always about growing this thing into a regional brewery. Um, so we started with the mindset, we got to get out there, we right. got to at least launch, and right. then after that, we're going to try to, you know, do as much as we possibly can. So we always had this mindset of being a regional brewery. Excellent. And we are making steps towards that. We're not anywhere near that yet, but that's always been kind of the goal. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, we're, we'll talk more beer in a little bit, but first, right. we're coming back in a couple of minutes on the Morning Brew with Friends with our buddy Joe Marie, who's going to tell us about everything we missed on the interwebs this last week. She's got some cool videos for us. Nice. Yeah, we'll check Can it we out. Check them out.